Hi class, welcome back. We're still in week two and now we're into lesson 2.3. So in 2.1, you got to start practicing and learning about observing nature as a designer, looking at the world, um, the natural world with a designer's eye. And then in 2.2, you started looking at functions, right? So you started to relentlessly ask the question, why? You know, why does the organism look like this and feel like this? Why does the organism exhibit these materials, shapes, forms, processes, and systems? And so in the next couple minutes, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the systems that you've already been observing this week. Anyone who's taken high school biology knows that nature is made up of ecosystems. And, you know, it's really obvious to look at something like this, this wetland, and, and recognize it as um, an ecosystem and perhaps many different systems um, within this one viewscape. We can imagine what it smells like and what it sounds like, um, birds chirping and, and uh, bugs, bugs zipping around and maybe little blurbs and splashes going on in the water. So you can imagine this dynamic flow of energy, water, nutrients, and materials going on at an ecosystem scale like this. And I'm guessing some of you have systems maybe that don't look like this, but have you can see the landscape scale systems going on at, at your um, special natural spot. And systems in nature happen at all scales. So we looked at the landscape scale, this is at a smaller scale. The system of, say, lichen, we've got some moss in there too. So lichen is a perfect synergy between algae and, and fungi. And so you get this, this mini system going on, which is a system within a larger system. So when we look at nature or we observe nature, we can, we can see these systems going on in nature. But again, sometimes we forget that we are very much a part of nature. Now, I'm guessing most of you right now are sitting in front of uh, a computer screen, right? You're, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, you're probably sitting indoors in front of a computer with an unnatural light, uh, perhaps feeling sorry for yourself because you rather you can't wait to get to your next BCI session. Um, but even as you sit here, you're, you're part of nature. And let's just to prove it to you, I want you to do something. Um, I want you to take a deep breath, okay, right now. <sighs> All right, with that one breath, you just took into your body 10 sextillion atoms of air. And because the wind is ceaselessly circulating all over the earth, over one year's time, you breathe in oxygen molecules exhaled by every person alive, as well as everyone who has ever lived. Right now, you may be breathing atoms that were once inside the lungs of President Obama, Daniel Craig, the Dalai Lama, your fellow students in this class, and Leonardo da Vinci. That's amazing to think about that. So as you sit here, you are part of the endless circulation of oxygen and other air molecules flowing around and through nature. And of course, your lungs are performing only half of your respiratory function. The other half is being performed by all the greenery outside that takes in CO2 and kicks out oxygen. So you and the plant world are working in perfect concert every time you breathe. That is the whole of your breathing system. So just by breathing, you are very much a part of nature's systems. And that's not all. You might think of yourself as an independent entity. Humans like to think of themselves as being independent. But you are the host of a whole ecosystem. Bacterial cells in the human body outnumber human cells 10 to 1. So you're walking around and what you're, the gravity that you're feeling that we were talking about observing earlier in the week, the, <laughs> you are carrying around 10 times more non-human cells than cells. On your skin, in your mouth, in your intestinal tract, everywhere in your body you've got bacteria. Um, bacteria, fungi, other non-human cells where some of those things are, are, are not good, but most of those bacteria you are absolutely crucially depend on to live. So again, you don't even have to go outside to observe systems functioning in nature. 
Remember earlier we talked about um, DNA here, indices four bits of information, allowing for all the biodiversity on Earth? Well, if you ask the question, how can nature have so many seamlessly interactive systems? One of which is we're all made from the same DNA. And the other is that we're all made from the same atoms, the same molecules. 99% of all the biomass on Earth, living and dead, is composed of just four elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Of course, two of those, hydrogen and oxygen, are what water's made of. And we talked earlier about being the water-based planet. Amino acids that make up all the proteins um, in your body and all the proteins you see out there in nature are made from carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. And that's what we're seeing right here is called it. And one of the many amino acids, there's like 20 of them or something, um, this is called this is alanine. C3H7NO2, for those of you who are curious. So one of the reasons why we can have these seamlessly interacting di interactive dynamic systems is because we're all made of the same molecules using the same set of information. So you and I and the hummingbird and some fungus can all um, interchange um, information and interchange molecules. Now, you know, that designing things based on systems you see in nature. So biomimetic design based on systems is kind of sort of the holy grail, really, of, of biomimetic design because that's when you really capture all the, the elements of, um, of biomimetic design and all the functionality in nature. And we actually were beginning to get that, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now this is a picture of um, I took from um, a science magazine, a science journal. So this is a, a picture, I believe, of um, yeast growing. So you could see this um, branching system. And if you had this image as part of its system, it might look something like this. So it's it itself is a branching structure, and it's connected with energy and nutrients and materials flowing among other types of systems and systems within systems, right? So if we could emulate that, wouldn't we have it made? Well, some of you may recognize this picture. Any of you recognize it? If you Google, do a Google image search on the internet, this is what you come up with. So this is what we're using right now for this class. We are part of this incredibly interconnected dynamic system. Arguably, the internet is one of the most amazing uh, designs that humans have ever come up with, and it's based on systems. In fact, some of the other designs that we think are so amazing, like the iPhone, for example, or other um, smartphones, are, you know, they basically do very little. If you just take a phone without the internet, and it, it just, you know, you can, I suppose, play some games on it, but um, take pictures. But its true functionality comes from leveraging the system. Most of the functionality of this um, design we consider so amazing actually takes place by the system outside of the phone. This device is um, leverages most of its functionality from the system. Okay, So that's one of the things I want you to think about when you're thinking about looking at systems in nature with a designer's eye. Okay, So that's all I'm going to say about systems. This isn't a class about systems thinking, although of course since nature is so full of systems, that's really <laughs> very much what we're about. But um, this is not specifically about systems thinking. Okay, So after you watch this video, you're going to read um, this uh, paper called Leverage Points, Places to Intervene in a System by Danella Meadows. Some of you have come, may have come across that before. If you have, I encourage you to read it again, this time thinking about looking at nature as a set of systems and looking at nature, nature systems with a designer's eye. Okay, so we'll give you about an hour to look at that. And then to get to do your, your last of your three BCI sessions, this time you're going to be seeing and sensing systems that you observe um, at your natural place. Then after that you get to do one more biomimetic design, this time leveraging um, not just um, systems but all the functionality that you've observed this week, observing nature as a designer. Okay, And so you're going to do a, a, just a quick fun design, don't worry about constraints or you know reality, things like that. Um, 
and um, and that'll be great. And I encourage you to um, look at each other's designs. You you start to see these different perspectives on um, functionality and biomimetic design. All right, that's it for now, and I will see you in the next video.